In this video, I want to spend a couple minutes and talk about the top 10 items you need to know about for the FileMaker 2024 release. First off, it's important to understand that Claris International, which makes the Claris FileMaker platform, is actually part of Apple Incorporated, which means that Claris is really kind of a division or department within Apple, right? The same Apple that makes iPhones and iPads and Macs and all these other great things. They also make the Claris FileMaker platform, which is pretty awesome. When you hear people talk about this release of FileMaker, you'll hear it frequently referred to as FileMaker 2024, which is the first release for this calendar year. Keep in mind that the technical version is FileMaker 21, so not to be confused with the year 2021. So sometimes you'll hear me refer to this as the 2124 release, and the version number you're going to hear will depend upon who you're talking to. If you're talking to sales and marketing, it's called 2024. If you're talking to technical people, they're going to refer to this as FileMaker 21. The next thing to keep in mind with this release is that Claris has not fundamentally shifted the furniture or moved things around. A couple of years ago, there was some confusion within the platform. However, this release is very consistent with what we had last year. So we have FileMaker Server, which hosts our custom application out on the internet or within the office if you want it enclosed in an office. FileMaker Server runs on Mac, Windows, and Linux. We have another video where we talk about the supported versions, et cetera. We're not going to spend too much time here with that. FileMaker Pro is still the development software you're going to use on Mac or Windows. And the operating system supported there would be the current operating system and one operating system back. So as of this moment, we're talking about Sonoma and Ventura on the Mac side and Windows 10 Pro and 11 Pro on the Windows side. FileMaker Go still works great with iOS devices. And if you need browser level access or access from an Android device, you're going to want to use FileMaker WebDirect. FileMaker WebDirect is essentially a real time rendering of a FileMaker custom application into a browser. Pretty slick. Now, if you don't want to roll your own FileMaker server and you want Claris to bundle your server software with the hardware so you don't have to deal with that, then you might want to think about Claris FileMaker Cloud. And you can check the Claris website for more information on that software as a service. Now, the next item to be aware of is that if you're considering about upgrading your FileMaker solution, this new release of FileMaker leverages the FMP12 file format. So this is the same file format that was created with the release of FileMaker back when 12 was released like over 10 years ago. The file format is so robust and powerful that Claris has not needed to update that file format which makes upgrading from older versions to the latest release pretty simple because there's no file conversion that goes in there. So that's one less thing to worry about. If you're upgrading from FileMaker 19 or 20 to FileMaker 21, I wouldn't expect that you'd have too many problems. The important thing to remember is that you need to test your solution before you roll it out live to your team, which ideally means is that you would set up a FileMaker 21 server parallel to your current FileMaker server so your team can continue to use the older version of FileMaker. You can make a copy of your solution, post it on the new server, then log into it and test it and try it out in advance. If you don't run into any problems, then you can shut down the old server, take that master file, move it to the new server. And as a note, this is especially easy if you're using a virtualized service like Amazon AWS EC2, where you set up your own FileMaker server. That makes things very simple. If you're using Microsoft Azure, that's another source of virtualized servers that you might want to take advantage of. So let's talk about new features of FileMaker Pro 21. Let me go ahead and pop over here to a sample CRM that we have. And this is running locally on this computer. I want to demonstrate something called Open Quickly, which is kind of a slick little quick search capability that's built into the FileMaker platform. And so if I'm in FileMaker and I say Command K, for example, it pops this little search capability up here that we see, pretty neat. And if I type in here, like, let's check out a script that maybe I have access to or a layout that I have access to. Let's say I type 500 because I tend to number my layouts or my scripts. I see that I have two layouts over here called L500 document data entry and L1500. So it allows me to then use the mouse, the keyboard. I can select down one, hit the return key, and it jumps us onto that layout instantaneously. So this will allow a developer or an end user of the system to access a script or layout that they legitimately have access to. So if you're in FileMaker over here and you go File, Manage, Security, 
and you have credentials that allow certain people to see certain layouts or scripts, things like that, then those scripts and layouts will show up in their search results. If I jump over to layout mode, which is pretty slick, and I'm working on this layout right here, and say I want to edit a script quickly, I can go to Command K to find the script, and I can say it's, you know, 100 or something. And so I have a bunch of layouts that are named 100 here, but I could come down here once again using the keyboard really fast as opposed to using your mouse, and I can say, well, let's check out this uh, script right here, this uh, 1001, which transfers an estimate to an invoice. I hit the return key, and it pops open the script workspace, allows me to come in here and edit this code. So as a developer, this is a pretty powerful tool. Keep in mind, if your end users find this feature and you haven't fully hidden all the layouts or all the scripts, they're likely to inadvertently activate a script or visit a layout that maybe you didn't otherwise expect them to visit. I think in a future version of FileMaker 21, Claris will tighten this capability down a little bit. Ideally for me, I would be concerned about users inadvertently jumping to a layout that they shouldn't have access to. And just think about the scripts and the layouts that those users have direct access to. Another small feature of FileMaker Pro 21 is the ability to support local notifications. Now, local notifications is something that's been around in FileMaker Go for a while. So that's for the iPhone and iPad. And Claris has added this capability to the Mac and Windows side with Pro. And I did a training video on this a while back. Local notifications allow a FileMaker script running on the client to schedule or to show a operating system level notification. Those have potential uses that might be interesting for you. Keep in mind it works on Mac and Windows. So you start to see full support of this capability to throw a operating system level dialogue and then to have a button on it that you can press that'll cause the script to activate. Now, the next item to be aware of is kind of a big one in the world of FileMaker, and that is the introduction of support for artificial intelligence integration. Now, people who have been playing with AI will tell you that AI is an opportunity to expand FileMaker. We're not talking about the HAL 9000 computer in the movie 2001, which basically killed off the astronauts on the ship. The AI that we have access to these days provides tremendous capabilities to perform repetitive tasks, such as triaging or reviewing piles of emails, coming up with statistical analysis of those documents or emails. It can also do things like helping to clean data that maybe was improperly input by users. AI has a lot of capabilities, and to be clear, it's not going to build a database for you. That's sci-fi. All it does is provides additional capabilities things that you could do with the FileMaker platform to make it even better. So in terms of jobs and employment, it's going to give you more things you can do, more things for your customers to spend money on in terms of building great applications that do more. So with the FileMaker 21 release, we see Claris adding AI support to the platform, and they're going to do this incrementally. And in this first release, we see something called semantic search, which basically means like natural language search. So you tell FileMaker, Please find all the records of all the invoices paid by customers who complained about the quality of service or something, right? And so the idea with semantic search is that it hears what you as a human say. It tries to determine what your intent is, and then it attempts to search the data to find the results of your intent. If you were going to do the search, say, conventionally in FileMaker, you'd have to say, well, find an invoice, find mode, enter an invoice range, and then find keywords unhappy or complaining or something like that. So that would be potentially problematic and time consuming for you to construct that. However, if you told an AI and it could understand that you were looking for that meaning, it could help find that data for you. There are a number of new functions in FileMaker that support this. I'm looking forward to seeing some simpler training on this topic because thus far the people who are using AI and FileMaker, that's a pretty advanced skill set In terms of our training with our daily live streams, that would be what I would call a very senior level developer or a triple ninja level FileMaker developer. And the goal for FileMaker overall is to make things simpler so people with lower level programming skills, maybe people who are not professional developers, professional programmers, can make use of FileMaker and do some amazing things with it. So I'm not going to spend too much more time on this, except it's in here officially and it will continue to get better. And I'm hoping that we have ways of making it simpler. So intermediate developers can take advantage of it.
other improvements within FileMaker Pro, including a number of JSON improvements. There's a new JSON make array function, which helps convert values to a given JSON array. So that is a new function in the FileMaker Pro product. And because you set up in Pro, then it would work everywhere with Pro, Go, WebDirect. It's pretty great. Claris has also made a number of improvements to how JSON works in terms of syntax and being smarter about how it handles syntax. And so you can see that right here with the JSON get element, JSON set element. These are great examples. So if, if you're big into doing API work, converting data in and out of JSON, these are all important improvements that you're going to want to take advantage of. In fact, the JSON improvements right here were one of the highest ranked improvements that the professional developers scored when Claris asked, what are the most important features? So Claris heard you and they're delivering those improvements with this release. Another exciting improvement with the release of FileMaker 21 is the upgraded version of the Execute Data API script step. This script step has historically been a read-only script step where you can form a JSON string, shoot that to the FileMaker server, and get back the data formatted in JSON. With the release of FileMaker 21, this script step now supports editing or writing data to the FileMaker database, where before it was only a read-only capability. This script step provides some interesting performance improvements and is generally targeted towards advanced developers. So if you've never used a script step before, it's important to understand that historically you can write web-based calls with HTML and PHP and JavaScript. You'd use the data API engine to make that request to the FileMaker server and to bring that data back out. Well, the FileMaker community thought this would be really great if you could do the same thing within a script step within the FileMaker client. And so back with the release of FileMaker 19, Claris Engineering gave us this ability to make the call and to read data out of the database. And now with the release of FileMaker 21, we can not only read the data, we can also write or edit the data, which is a great improvement. So lastly, on the pro side, there are over 200 in-market fixes to bugs that are in the FileMaker Pro product in FileMaker 20. So the previous version of the product was FileMaker 20. It was released in the year 2023. So there were a bunch of bugs in there. Claris cares about these bugs. Some people talk about bugs. We say, oh, we don't have bugs in the product. Everyone knows there's bugs in everything. There's bugs in Tesla cars. But what we care about are companies that go out of their way to fix the bugs, take the issues seriously. Claris is doing that. Over 200 fixes in FileMaker Pro. Speaking of bug fixes, let's jump to FileMaker Server and talk about that. There are over 100 bug fixes there, at least, probably close to 200. Depends on what you call a bug. A lot of the capabilities in FileMaker Server have been upgraded, patched, fixed. Security holes, which we never hear about, are addressed in FileMaker. One of the side notes about the Claris FileMaker platform is I mentioned it was run by Apple. Apple is really big on privacy and protecting software against hackers. So Apple has an entire team of white hat hackers. It's all very hush-hush and secret. And these people go out and try to break into software. And they've directed some of their interest at the FileMaker platform to make sure it's impervious to attack. And so while we're not told specifics of what goes on, we know there are a number of fixes in each release of the Claris FileMaker platform. And version 21 is no different. There are a number of security improvements in the product. The next thing to know about the FileMaker 21 release, with FileMaker Server specifically, is specific support for Let's Encrypt. Let's Encrypt is a non-for-profit SSL encryption certificate business that provides an alternate method for purchasing a SSL certificate. For those of you who are technical or understand the basics about SSL, you need an SSL certificate so your data from FileMaker Server out to the clients is encrypted and safe and secure. And so Let's Encrypt is a essentially a free or super low cost option for that. It's new in FileMaker 21. And so we expect some live streams and training videos on this as time moves forward. So Let's Encrypt might be useful for some organizations, but maybe not applicable for all organizations. You wanna check on any corporate or data privacy limits with Let's Encrypt as well as support with the FileMaker platform, but it's finally in the product, which is exciting. Now, a couple other notable features of FileMaker Server 21 is persistent cache. And persistent cache is an initial attempt by Claris to help a crash or a restart of the FileMaker server 
go more smoothly. Now, as a general rule, I always tell people that if you're an administrator of a FileMaker server and the server crashes, you take the crashed file, you save it somewhere on the FileMaker server, but you remove it from being active. It's put into archive. You're going to save it for the future in case there's something on it you need. You always take the last good backup and you copy it from that location to the live folder on your FileMaker server. So you're restoring from the last good backup. That's why having backups that are at least once an hour is super important. That way, if there's some unfortunate crash, and really crashes anymore, pretty rare with the FileMaker platform. We don't see them that often. But when that happens, you always want to restore from the last good backup. If you want to know more about that, come watch us on our live streams. We'll spend a lot of time talking about that. That being said, persistent cache is an attempt by Claris. So if the FileMaker server process running on Mac, Windows, or Linux crashes, that service dies. When FileMaker server spins back up, it will attempt to resuscitate that file for you automatically and restore any data that may have been in RAM memory at the time. So it's an interesting technology. It doesn't solve all crash problems. In fact, I'm still kind of watching it with interest because I'm not sure what my recommendation is on it to use it or not. But this is an important thing to know video. It's not the 10 most important things you have to immediately use. These are just things that you should know. And this is one of those things that I'm going to keep an eye on and watch. And we might use it in the future once we get a little bit more comfortable with it. Lastly, there's some server administrative console improvements. So if you log into your FileMaker server with a browser interface, some of these pages of this interface have been tuned up and improved. Specifically, where the schedules for the backups are set up, those have been moved. And it makes a little bit more sense now. So all the schedules are kind of together for scheduling things. When people talk about schedules, they think about backup schedules. You could also have your FileMaker server schedule a script to run for you, right? That can always be done. So there's other schedules besides backups. So the interface has been subtly polished. In fact, if you use FileMaker server all the time and you go from FileMaker 20 to 21, you'll be like, what happened? Something moved. It'll be subtle. And so you'll look for those things. Just be aware that that's not a bug. Your browser hasn't malfunctioned. Claris has done some reorganizing uh, to make things more intuitive. So once again, in summary, a ton of fixes, some nice to have improvements with Pro and Server, and then major improvements in terms of JSON interaction, as well as the beginnings of AI integration in terms of semantic search. The last thing people always ask me is, because I immediately roll out to this new version of FileMaker. Generally, if you're already on say FileMaker 20 from last year, feel free to use FileMaker Pro 21 and try it out. Then after a couple months, we look at the number of bug reports for the product and we make a determination whether we want to install FileMaker Server 21. Almost invariably, we end up installing the next bug release version of FileMaker Server 21. So first version at ships will be 21.0. The next bug release version that Claris is already working on is 21.1. And I would imagine that that would be a pretty solid release. So once again, if you're on FileMaker 20, feel free to play with the latest clients. If you're on versions farther back than that, check out our video on the technical requirements to run FileMaker 21. Because if you're running, say, a FileMaker 17 or 18 server and you install FileMaker Pro 21, those two versions can't talk to each other. They're too far apart. So check out our other video where we talk about interoperability between different versions of FileMaker. If you want to check us out on the live stream, visit fmtraining.tv, 1 p.m. Pacific time, Monday through Friday. We're always running a hot conversation on the Claris FileMaker platform. We'll see you there.